Devil's Thorn. The torture of Ixion, condemned by the gods to lose his mind because of his arrogance. The incredulity of St. Thomas. Why is Caravaggio representing St. Thomas putting his finger in the wound? Thomas looks on, but doesn't touch. Last judgment. Why do I always get the most terrifying room? Inspiration of St. Matthew, or Matthew writing his gospel, dictated to him by voices. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. There's a circle around the lock here. It must be the trunk Mortimer was talking about. The key should open it. There's a note. Effects of Sœur de Richer to be given to her son, Louis. I should probably take it. Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Excuse me, am I bothering you? I was sleeping. I need your help. What's going on? Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? I, I bumped into her in the small salon before. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Sir, I, I don't feel well. I'm going to have to decline. I see. Well, I hope you won't be needing my help one day. I must act swiftly. I'll search my room later. Monseigneur, his eminence, Cardinal Piaggi. Louis, you're straying from your objective. Louis, you're straying from your objective. Duke Manuel Godoy. I recognize this part of the corridor. I'm close. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. <laughs> Locked. Servants change the beds every day. There must be a service key somewhere. Good evening. 
you, sir. I'm sorry, but an important meeting is underway. My instructions are to let no one pass. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Tell me, my good man. Sir? Listen, I'm an insomniac, and Sir Holm told me that you could go to the kitchen and make me a cup of herbal tea. And what is in this herbal tea, sir? Holm gave Washington a recipe for a sleeping drought. What was it again? Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. I, yes, it's herbal tea. I, I'll go and make it for you at once, sir. I'll wait for you in my room. Hmm. I need to find a place to watch undisturbed. Cannibal crossing the Alps. Another military success. Why do I get nothing but visions of horror in my the Battle of Alexander at Isus, or how Alexander the Great triumphed over King Darius? Yet another. It's a beautiful weapon. My dearest son. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. The Prince by Machiavelli. A perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm. That might come in handy. Ah, this window opens onto the balcony. Okay, hmm. so that means the other room must be on my right. I understand your eagerness, but the pressure on my family complicates the task. Relax, my friend. Your relatives will soon be huh. safe. So what I saw in my vision really did happen. <sighs> well, I hope I haven't missed anything important. I thank you so much. Don't mention it. Now that's settled, let us speak about your support. Yes. You mentioned earlier some assistance from the Golden Order? Absolutely. I have concluded an agreement with their leader, Lady Sarah Faustine de Richet. Another case that Mother didn't tell me about. The funds from the Order will finance the building of a foundry in Tuscany. You will soon be able to count on a hundred or more cannons for your future campaigns. I... I was not expecting so much help from you. Uh, when can I meet this uh, de Richet? Well, unfortunately, something has cropped up. De Richet has disappeared. Disappeared? What, here? Yes, but the staff are redoubling efforts to find her, I assure you. So the agreement, is it on or off? It is on. Her right-hand man has just arrived here to help us find her. And it is none other than her son, Louis Maurras de Richet. I wager he will ensure his mother's commitments are met. Louis, not an easy name to live with in these times. Uh, of course, but from now on you will deal with him. This man, he can only be Mortimer. Very well, I will seek him out. Ah! Merde. Better get away from here.
Lily? Emily? I can explain. Perhaps, but remains. Bill. But, but first, you could perhaps remove the blade from my throat? You have ten seconds to explain your presence here. I'm not here for you. What are you doing in my room? I, I thought a night stroll would help me sleep better. A servant must have closed the window behind me and- And I... my window was the only way for you to get back inside. Most convincing. What were you really doing on the balcony? Seeing the window open, I feared someone had entered your room. With what I'd heard next door, I had every reason to believe that your life was in danger. I am a grown woman, but how kind of you to worry about me. Now that I'm safe and sound, tell me more. Has this anything to do with the Order? Oh, yes. Washington informed me you were part of the Order. You too? You're part of this too? Yes. Now answer. Do these events concern me? Do they involve the Golden Order? I overheard a conversation between a French soldier and some other individual. And what were they talking about? It seems Mother is involved. Something about a military campaign? Apparently my mother validated an order of cannons to help this man. Really? Since when does the Order finance wars? As far as I know, since never. Did they give any details? A date? What they were for? Nothing at all. Did you know anything about this? No, but I won't forget. Thank you. All right, Louis, I might have overreacted a bit. Please do excuse me, but next time, please try knocking on my door. I'd be delighted to open it for you. Oh, well, I'll remember in that case. Good night, Emily. Good night, Louis. Napoleon Bonaparte. Sir Jacques Perru. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the hall? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Louise. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. You're straying from your objective. Whew. I'm exhausted. I better go to bed. I'll search my room tomorrow. If Mother stayed here right before me, you never know. And 
Mortimer had better show up. My vision yesterday, I saw that Mother had this room before me. I better search the room. Who knows? Maybe she left me something behind. writing material. Nothing. I haven't even had time to unpack my cases. Yeah, monsieur. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Look, markings on the floor. Eh, just a bit worn out. I was hoping to find something leading to a secret. Oh, this bookcase is well stocked. Oh, this book has been put back the wrong way round. A voyage around the world. The travel log of the explorer, Louis Antoine de Bougainville. One of Mother's favorite books. What a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. It's just too much. I don't know what's going on here, but if you felt threatened, I'll bet you'd leave a clue, wouldn't you, Mother? Found it. A faint sign of the order. Barely visible. Mother, you undoubtedly must have hidden a clue in this book. Let's see if I can find anything else in this room. Not far from solving the puzzle, I must keep searching.
Saint Jerome and the Saturn devouring his son, Saint Francis of Assisi in ecstasy, before superior voices. Here's something will undermine my botanist appreciation for the local climate. Hmm. Let's recap. My mother was in this room. I found a rare edition of her favorite book. She must have left something behind. She must have used the writing materials. What if she used lemon juice instead? An old trick used to hide messages. A message using invisible ink. I bet she used a lemon to leave a message. Now, how do I reveal the message? This room looks unoccupied. This room looks unoccupied. Nothing. Let's see what my mother wrote. Where all eyes size you up, you must pass by the Gorgon. Gorgon was the name of Medusa in Greek mythology. On the other hand, where all eyes size you up, I don't get it. And judging by the number of paintings in the manor, could be anywhere. After that, she adds, beware hero. The beast always charges the best protected soldier. And that's its weakness. What is my mother trying to tell me? Since you've gone to so much trouble, you must not have only found something important, but you must have also felt like you were in great danger. Now I'd better hurry and find that damn Medusa. Sir, dinner is served in the Red Salon. Typical. I'm not hungry. Please give my apologies to all the guests. Uh, Sir Holm requests your presence, sir. Well... I guess I'm just gonna have to wait before going and looking for my Medusa. Tell him I'll be there in a minute. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely. If I get a chance, I may have to take a little tour through the rooms of the other guests.
Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Might be better to take a different stairway. That must be the door to the room of the soldier I saw in my vision. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Monsieur Jacques Perru. Bicorn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. A fragment of amber. French actor Talma is Nero in Britannicus, the last emperor of the Caesar dynasty. My dear. Jacques Perru. Sir Johann von Wulner. That's the door to Elizabeth's room. For God's sakes, what happened in here? My dear Elizabeth. Novel of the initiation of a young woman into June 11th, August 24th. Third of November.
Looks like I found a box containing some kind of white crystals. These are magnesium crystals, a fairly effective remedy for easing anxiety. Well, let's see what it tastes like. Ugh. I really need to stop tasting everything I find now. chest with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Feet and hands are bound. A piece of cloth in the mouth prevents the tongue from being sectioned. It looks like preparation for an exorcism. Is Elizabeth really possessed? President George Washington. Let no one disturb me. I'm busy. Too bad. We'll see him later. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Might be better to take a different stairway. Me, Monsieur de Richet, I really need to talk to you. Hello. You're Elizabeth Adams, aren't you? Yes. I regret that we haven't been properly introduced. You had us all worried last night. How are you feeling today? Better. I was just a bit queasy. Don't worry about it. It happens all the time. Do you really want to know what made me ill? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? Excuse me, but speaking frankly, why would you care? I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed, no. I remember her stare. Cold as ice. 
her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. And next you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait. There must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? You're right, I... I don't want this conversation to turn into an interrogation. You suffered enough already, I... I respect your silence. Please excuse me. Well, thank you. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fits stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope, until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. 
Of course, sir. What would you require? My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. Look, you aren't going to kick up a fuss about a vulgar piece of resin, are you? Don't believe what they say about amber. It does nothing to warm up infants' bodies, let alone prevent toothache. And neither does this fossil oleoresin stimulate fertility. You can believe me. Thank you for educating me. I didn't know. Here you are, sir. Does sir desire anything else? I still haven't quite recovered after the boat crossing. Would you have any Maltese cross by any chance, please? I, I am sorry, sir, but the Maltese cross may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. I would advise against, sir, taking any. You see, Tribulus cystoides is from the Zygophilaceae family, very rich in nitrates and potassium chloride. It was used in India 700 years before Christ, my good fellow, and I know nothing better to perk you up. Oh, as Sir wishes. Here is the herb, sir. May I help you in anything else, sir? You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. My good fellow, you're right. One should never mix treatments without the advice of an expert. It so happens that I usually make my own golden elixir, but I haven't brought my kit with me. Perhaps, in that case, would you fetch a spoonful of ethyl alcohol, ethereal oil, and 10 milliliters of ethanol for me? Along with that, a small quantity of gold, please. Just a few crumbs will suffice. Ah, I see that Sir knows his subject. Therefore, I see no reason why I shouldn't give them to you. I hope that will be enough for you, Sir, because I haven't any more. Thank you. That will be fine. May I help with anything else, sir? A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. Listen, I suffer from terrible migraines, and the voyage by boat is brought on my rheumatism. So, unless you have anything else to alleviate the pain, please give me some quickly. Thank you. Oh, and, and the one from Bordeaux, right? I prefer it to the one from Paris. Immediately, sir. Here. I hope, sir, will get well again quickly. Anything else, sir? What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther, by Goethe, sir, and I am not hiding it. Hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend, sir, a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Huh. There you are, then. That's exactly where I left it. I am quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But I... Now! But, sir, I... Very well, sir. 
Here you are. May sir take good care of it. It is damaged. And you've damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things I wanted to go over with you. I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? It's the least one can say. Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Oh. Ah. Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French I Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely! If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry, I appreciate the same great varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. 
Just mention that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. <laughs> My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur... Louis Moras de Richet. <laughs> de Richet. De Richet. A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? The presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility. Nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette. Monsieur von Vonnet. Does not know a person. Oh, surely not. Uh -huh. yes. Have you any information on this Napoleon? Uh -huh. Maybe Emily has an idea. Mortimer firmly believes in the young soldier. He's going to finance a military campaign with the backing of the Golden Order. It seems that Sarah gave it her blessing too. I didn't know that. Me neither. Please, I'll give Sarah a piece of my mind. I don't know what mess she's gotten herself into, but for God's sake, she should have told us. You knew everything. You could have answered for me. That's true, but you have such a clever way with words. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? What are you doing out there? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 louis d'or for 200 cannon. Surely such an amount will buy twice as many cannons. Don't try to pull a fast one on me. We're both young, but we are not naive. Please don't be offended. I just wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about. And I am reassured. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I hear your words and I agree. Monsieur de Richet. I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. 
I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. <laughs> 